welcome back to my channel. So today I've got a perfume video for you. I have been really into perfume recently. I've been watching so many videos about, you know, what fragrances are coming out, looking at fragrance reviews. I've been going to um, fragrance stores, trying out different scents and um, I actually just made another fragrance purchase which just arrived today which inspired me to make this video for today. As I've gotten older I feel like my taste has gotten a little bit more refined. The scents that I really enjoy have gotten a little bit more complex and um, just a little bit more unique I think over time. I feel like there's sort of two categories of fragrances. There's like the basic bitch fragrance and I'm trying to say that in a light-hearted sort of way and I do own a few like basic bitch fragrances that I enjoy wearing. It's kind of like fragrances that are very popular, things that you smell on different people, like nothing really super unique, nothing that really stands out. The other is sort of more the niche fragrance category. So these are really um, scents that won't appeal to everybody. A lot of people might be turned off by these scents. Like some of these are they're just not very, they're just not super popular scents for a reason because a lot of people might not enjoy that type of scent. I've definitely wandered more into that niche fragrance category. I, there's still a lot of fragrances that I enjoy wearing that are sort of more like basic bitch. I just, I, I love that term. So that's why I'm using it. I'm not using it in a negative way. I'm just saying like sort of more popular fragrances. I'll, I'll smell a perfume on somebody and I can immediately recognize what perfume that is because it's something that's very popular. And these niche fragrances, they're often like way more expensive. Some of the ingredients are really pricey. And also what I found is the niche fragrances often are very, very concentrated. So they're more like really strong eau de parfum. I've also stopped buying eau de toilette actually now that I think about it because I feel like they're not a very good bang for your buck. Eau de toilettes can still be quite pricey and the scent just does not last on me. I'm gonna show you first of all the one that I just purchased today. It is by Serge Lutin. Now Serge Lutin is a French designer. His fragrances I think are really something very unique in the fragrance world. I think like he has a definite vision of his scents, like of his perfumes that is very just different from a lot of fragrances that are out there on the market, but they are definitely more on the expensive side. So these are perfumes that are kind of a splurge, like this is not something I just pick up on a random whim. He has a lot of unisex perfumes that I think really can be worn by both men and women. And then I think he does have some that are more geared more towards women and some that are geared more towards men. But the line is kind of blurred and that's what I really like about this house. I buy the Vaporisateur, so they come in different sizes. The 100 milliliters, I, unless you really, really love that perfume, I honestly wouldn't go for the 100 ml because these um, these are eau de parfums and they're so concentrated. It will literally take you so long to go through 100 milliliters. So what I've gotten in the habit of buying is the black vaporisateur. So it comes in a um, thing like this. So the bottle is not as like fancy as his other bottles, but first of all, I think they're really cool. They're sleek and black and you can easily take these traveling with you, which I think is really cool. 30 milliliters in here and then it comes with a second refill. So in total, it's 60 milliliters, which is quite a lot of perfume. And um, because these are so concentrated, uh, they will last you a really long time, honestly. Like, it'll take me a while to go through 60 milliliters of a Serge Lutin perfumes because also the Vaporisateur, they are less expensive than his bottles. So this one is called the Feminité du Bois. The main note in here is spices and plum. So it's a spicy, woody fragrance because it's called Feminité du Bois. So there are some woody fragrances in here as well. Oh my God, it is so beautiful. I, I smelled this in the store and I was just like blown away how different this was from anything that I owned. And at this point, I don't wanna buy a bunch of fragrances that kind of smell like something I already own. I really want to own lots of different, really different smelling fragrances. This one is so beautiful. I can definitely smell the plum in here and the spices. Oh my God, this smells like mulled wine with plums that you're drinking in a forest. That's for me the best way to describe it. I definitely think this is more of a fall winter perfume. Like it's definitely not very summery, 
But personally, I don't really give a crap. I wear whatever I want, whenever I want. I will definitely wear this in the summer too. Oh, it's just so beautiful. I love, love, love his fragrances. A lot of people kind of describe this as a feminine, masculine scent. So this is actually like, as if you can imagine like a perfume made for men, but it's leaning very much to the feminine side. Absolutely love this. I'm really glad I purchased this. So I, this, I got new. So I can't really say much about the Sillage or the last, like the longevity of it. So to those of you who are not familiar with like perfume terms, sillage means how far away you can smell the perfume. So if I'm like standing here and someone's standing like way across the room on the other side and they can smell my perfume, that means it has a really strong sillage. Versus if it has a really poor sillage, you have to like really dig your nose right into it to be able to smell it. I think the sillage on this one is is moderate. Like it's it's fairly good. I do think it's fairly long lasting because I did try it in store. Um, I spritzed it on and I could still smell it on me in the evening. And that's another thing I love about the Serge Lutin perfumes is, yes, they're expensive, but you only need a little bit and they do last a long time. So I personally feel like it's worth it. The first one that I ever purchased was this one called Ambre Sultan. Sultan. So I'm saying it the French way because it's a French brand, but it's, um, Amber Sultan, and I got this again in the Vaporizateur. The only thing now is that I have like two. I'll have to like smell them because it doesn't say it on the bottom. I'll have to like actually open it to smell it, which one is which. This is absolutely one of his classic scents uh, that's been around, I think, for a while. This is a very, very spicy oriental scent. So oriental means that there's a lot of these um, ingredients from notes that are sort of more from the Middle Eastern, Asian part of the planet. So uh, obviously amber is a main component of this. It is called Amber Sultan. So Sultan comes from that sort of Middle Eastern vibe. So it has like an amber scent. Amber has that very rich kind of sweet note and then it has also the spiciness of the spices from these Middle Eastern Oriental, they call them Oriental. I know it's kind of an outdated term, but that's what it's called in the perfume world. It's again unisex, but I think a lot of people, especially here on YouTube, this is reviewed by men. So it is kind of more of a masculine scent. I just want to show you the color of it because it's so beautiful. It is definitely amber colored, just very deep amber color. This one has an amazing sillage. If I spray on like one, two, like just two spritzes, people can smell it like across the room. It is super intense and the longevity is excellent. I put this on in the morning, especially if I put it like near my hair, if it gets in my hair, I can smell it on me at the end of the day. And if I'm like, if I don't shower that evening, um, I will smell it on me the next morning when I get out of bed. Maybe a lot of women wouldn't really go for a fragrance like this, but I just love it. This one is definitely more masculine than the Feminité du Bois. The Feminité, I mean, Feminité means like feminine, the feminine forest, I think. I don't use this one all the time. This is not like my go-to, don't think about it fragrance. Like I probably will get more use out of this one because it's a little bit more kind of goes with anything. I mean, not that it's like super generic, it's not generic, but this one is more sort of universal than this one. This is very a unique, unique scent and I definitely have to be in the mood for it, but it's just so gorgeous. I don't have any other fragrances in my collection um, like the Amber Sultan and I highly recommend it, it's gorgeous. I think I have talked about this in a couple of videos, so I'm gonna try not to spend too much time on it, but it's hard because I love it. It's the Deptique Oud Palau, another beautiful, unisex fragrance that is leaning more towards the masculine side. A lot of the reviews on YouTube, if you put in Oud Palau by Tiptique, it'll be men reviewing the scent, but I feel like it's very unisex. I love Oud. Oud is a very special ingredient. It comes from the agar wood that has a certain type of rot in the wood. Like that's how the, that's how that scent, like where it comes from. So it's like an agar wood that has some kind of a, a fungus and that particular fungus in that type of wood makes that scent called oud. It's originally sort of more Middle Eastern, Oriental, they call it fragrances um, that contain it. It's gotten a lot more traction in Western countries in the last like few years. I wanted an oud perfume because I feel like that scent is so unique. Um, it has this sort of smoky, woodsy, animalic scent. So animalic means it kind of all, almost reminds you of like an animal or something like that. There is actually, I think, rose in here. The rose is not super strong. So if you're expecting like a very rose oud scent, I would recommend 
um, rather the um, Oud Isfahan by Christian Dior, that one is beautiful. Arabi Rose or something like that by Giorgio Armani collection, Collection Privé, the private collection, they have a, a, a rose oud that has a lot more rose in it than this one. So this is not super rosy, but because of that rose note in here, it makes it definitely more wearable. And this one, again, silage is enormous. If I spray this on, people like across the room can smell it. <laughs> that might be a good or a bad thing. I personally like when scents do have a lot of silage. And uh, long lastingness, top, top, top. This is another Eau de Parfum. Kind of expensive. This is um, 75 milliliters. It is so intense and it is so such a particular scent that you don't need to like douse yourself. It's like two sprays is plenty. Any more than that, you're gonna make people sick. So this is definitely my favorite um, diptyque scent. Okay, next up I wanna talk about this one by Mugler. So I think they're called now Mugler, but the original name is Thierry Mugler. He's a French uh, designer. So this is the Angel Muse. Now the, um, the Angel, the original Angel has been around forever. It's kind of a cult classic among Mugler fans. I love this. I don't really love the Angel, the the first one but the angel muse is totally different i think and it's just a beautiful gourmand scent so gourmand means any kind of perfume that has an edible flavor sugar and um, vanilla and chocolate caramel any of these kind of bakery or edible types of sweet scents like things that you would find in desserts that's characterized as a gourmand scent so this definitely falls in the gourmand category. This is again an eau de parfum, enormous silage. You only need two sprays maximum. Lasting power is incredible on his fragrances. I, I mean, I haven't tried them all, but the ones that I do own, the, the lasting power is incredible. Like you will smell them on you the next day if you put it on the night before. I think the main note in here is hazelnut. I'll have all the notes, the scent notes listed, um, but it's definitely a very sweet, creamy, nutty, chocolatey scent. Very seductive. I feel like this is like a movie where they have like a scene with like a really romantic dinner and they're eating like sexy desserts on like chocolate buffet or something like that. It's not super chocolatey. I feel like the hazelnut is really the main note. So I will say it kind of reminds them of Nutella, but in a much more refined, like high end. Like you want to think Nutella, going to the Champs-Elysees in Paris or something like high-end Nutella. Yeah, it definitely has that edible, sweet, um, I just wanna take a bite out of you scent. Um, this is one that I've gotten a lot of compliments on when I, when I wear it, especially from other women. Women seem to love this scent. Two more fragrances by Mugler or Thierry Mugler. And these are two versions of the same perfume. So this is the Thierry Mugler Angel, and this is the Eau de Parfum. Let me just see if that's correct. Yeah, so this is the um, Eau de Parfum, and this is also Alien, but this is the Alien Absolu, which is also an um, Eau de Parfum, but it is, I don't know, just like a slightly different variation. I can't really tell you the like huge difference between these two. This one is kind of a really hard scent to describe. This is such a different mix of anything that I own. A feminine scent, but it's not a typical, like I wouldn't call this like a basic bitch perfume. So the main notes are balsamic, amber, vanilla, white floral, and smokiness. And I think the white flower in here is jasmine, and I could definitely smell the vanilla, but then there's like something rougher, that smoky edge to it. So it, it's just it's just a really interesting composition. Lasting power on this is again, super incredible. It has very good silage as well. So people will be able to smell this on you if you come in a room. It's something that's a little bit more popular, like Terry Mugler, our scents are fairly popular, but I feel like these ones are more, unique they're not the basic bitch perfumes okay so now i actually do have some i'm gonna call them basic bitch perfumes that just a lot of people wear these but they're still nice like i still like them the chanel chance now this is in the original pump up thing for chanel chance this is the travel edition but this is actually the eau fraiche and i think this is actually eau de toilette i was wearing the um chanel chance the original one for a really long time. Like that's what I wore, I wore the Eau de Parfum. I got kind of sick of that scent, so I still liked the chance when I wanted to try something different. So I tried the Eau Fraiche, and I love this in the summer. It's a fresh, floral, slightly citrus note um, scent. This is just, I would say this is a basic bitch perfume just because 
you know, I think like Chance is one of their most best selling perfumes. And I feel like Chanel fragrances, like they're really the best sellers, just you smell them so often on people. Like I smell Coco Mademoiselle, Chance, and what's the other one, like the new one, Gabrielle or something. I smell that on so many women. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying like, it's not a super unique scent. It's still really pretty. I still like to wear this. Um, so this is like my basic bitch <laughs> summer fragrance if I am feeling in the mood for something lighter. Like those ones, the ones I've showed you so far are all pretty heavy scents. So this one is definitely something like lighter, girlier. I could definitely see like a younger girl wearing this as well. This is the original Stella by Stella McCartney. So this is the original one, Eau de Parfum. I love the bottle. It was one of the first, I think, bottles that did this kind of gradient um, design. It's like a deep purple. This is my one and only really strong rose perfume that I own because I'm not a huge rose lover. This is like an unexpected rose. It smells like a jammy type of rose. Like, I don't know if you've ever had rose jam. It kind of smells like that, but there is a citrus note in here as well. And I feel like the combination of the rose with the citrus makes this a lot fresher and makes this a lot younger and more modern. It doesn't smell, um, like something like what my grandma might have worn. <laughs> now, the only thing I have to say, what I'm very disappointed with is, this is my second bottle that I purchased. This is actually the perfume that I wore on my wedding day, because I feel like it's a very romantic, very womanly, girly, um, feminine scent. So this is my second bottle. The original bottle that I bought was like a small one. This is, I think, 100 milliliters. Yes, it is 100 milliliters, because I did love it so much, so I repurchased like the large size. Apparently, Stella McCartney, her team reformulated this perfume. Since the reformulation, the lasting power of this has just gone down, um, which is very upsetting, because I remember the first bottle I purchased, I would spray it on and people would be asking me around me, what am I wearing? And they could smell it on me like hours and hours later. It was very good silage and it had very long lasting performance. This one, it dissipates so quickly, which is kind of surprising because it is an eau de parfum, which is usually more concentrated. It just does not last on me. Like one hour, two hours later, it's completely gone. You have to reapply. And I have read on perfume forums that People um, feel like the reformulation is less concentrated or I don't know what they did, at least, I mean, to me, I definitely notice a difference. So now the rest of the perfumes that I have, these are not really like my absolute favorites. These are some things that I've wore. This is like my most basic bitch perfume that I own. This is the Mademoiselle by Azaro and this is the Eau de Toilette. This was sent to me. This little bow, I'm just not into bows. Oh my God. As soon as like a perfume has a bow on it, I would never pick that perfume up to smell it. It's just so not me. This is like super basic bitch, like fruity, floral, fresh. Like that's how I kind of describe like basic pitch scents. It's like super non-offensive. It's pretty like, yes, it makes you smell good. There's just nothing original about this at all. But surprisingly, I'm like almost done with this bottle. This is the 30 mil. So this is the small one. I don't know what to put on. I just want to grab a bottle quickly. Just put something on. I will go for this. Like I probably wouldn't repurchase this, but I have enjoyed wearing it in the time that I have had it. Like that classic basic bitch, like everybody smells like this. This is one that was sent to me from Erin. This is the Hibiscus Palm. Um, this is an eau de parfum. And again, very surprising because this does not have a super great lasting power. I mean, it's a hibiscus, so hibiscus is, a, is the main note, but it's definitely like a very tropical floral. So this is something that I would more likely wear in the summertime. So maybe come summer, I will wear this a bit more. I wouldn't purchase this myself, but um, it's nice. Like I do wear it a f sometimes. I have actually two from the body shop. This one is called Bohanti. This is one of their Eau de Parfum. This is the spicy wood scent. I like this. I do wear this sometimes. It has a smokiness to it. They came out with a whole series of perfumes. Um, this is the one that I think doesn't have any florals in it. And that's why I actually felt it was very unique. But I think this would be a good unisex scent as well. I could definitely see males wearing this as well, but without being like overly masculine. I do wear that sometimes. This is the Red Musk Eau de Parfum, also by The Body Shop. This one is definitely more musky. I mean, it is called Red Musk. It's also not overly, I definitely would say these two are not basic bitch perfumes. <laughs> so these are very, I feel like unique scents. It's by Hermès, L'Ombre de Merveille. They have like a few different versions of this. This is an amber scent. And actually I feel like this perfume kind of got me into amber scents. This is definitely way more feminine than the Amber Sultan. The Amber Sultan is a lot spicier, more unisex. This one is like amber, but almost, 
I think there must be vanilla or something in there too. I don't have the notes here on the top of my head. It's very sweet amber. It is very long lasting. Um, this is a very expensive perfume, which is why I do wear it sometimes, but definitely like for amber, if I do want to go for amber now, I'd probably go for the Amber Sultan. This is by L'Occitane and it's called the Terre de Lumière. And this is like L'Occitane's version of a gourmand scent. It smells like kind of almondy, vanilla, sweet. It's actually an eau de parfum, which is really surprising because the downside to this one is that it just does not last on me. You put it on and a couple hours later, I really can't smell it on me. So it's something that you do need to touch up. There are really big differences from one perfume house to the next. You do kind of get what you pay for. Not always. I mean, I know there's some really inexpensive perfumes that have great lasting power, but I it is generally that like the really expensive perfumes will last longer. I don't know, I feel like it's okay. It's okay, it's not my favorite. And this is one by Dita Montese, and this is actually the little small one. This is like the little pocket size one. I had a big size one as well, but I don't know what happened. I don't know if it leaked or if I finished it. Anyway, I don't have the big one anymore. This is the original one, the Dita Montese. Eau de Parfum, the very original one. And this just kind of brings back like nostalgic memories because this is the perfume that she was promoting when I actually got to meet Dita Montese and when I interviewed her and I have a video of my interview with Dita Montese actually on my YouTube channel. If you if you weren't subscribed to me back then or whatever, you can go and watch that because it was really cool meeting her and I got a picture with her and everything. The only thing is that this purse edition is like really annoying to open because they have this like special clamp and I don't know, it's just annoying to open. It actually smells really nice. I actually really do like this fragrance. Very sophisticated, um, it doesn't have that. It, this is definitely not like a basic bitch perfume. It is like a less expensive one. It's a bitch to open, honestly. It's not basic bitch, but it's a bitch to open. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope this video wasn't too long. Let me know some of your favorite perfumes. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this long video and I will see you soon, bye.